I want to ask you to begin with, I ask this question. Do you have joy in the Lord today? Just let me, let me see some flicker in your eyes or you don't have to stand up and yell or anything, but just let me, do you have joy in the Lord? You know, we could be unhappy and still have joy in the Lord. Things, see, joy and happiness are two different things. Our happiness or our unhappiness depends on circumstances around us. But joy comes from the Lord living deep within. And even in, the spite of, in spite of all the bad things that may be going on in your life, you can still have joy down deep in your heart. Is there joy in your heart because of your relationship with Jesus? You know, it's easy to lose our joy as we focus on the problems of life. I sense today, and, and I, I think this has come about since COVID, I saw a great change in the attitudes of people during COVID and then after COVID. I sense a spirit of apathy, of hopelessness, even among Christians, even among Christians. God's people ought to be joyful, ought to be the most joyful people on the face of the earth, if anybody has a reason to smile, we do. We have a hope that's out of this world, that's beyond this world. There is much for the child of God to rejoice about. These verses were, were, were given to the nation of Israel concerning their captivity because of their sin and because of their disobedience. Now, they are directed to Israel, but there's a great application for the church as well. I hope that as we look at these verses, we'll find encouragement in the Lord and we'll realize that it's possible to have real joy in the journey. Verse 1 says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. This is past tense. God is saying this is a done deal. It's settled. He's talking about the past. Each of us has a past. Everybody here has a past. There are some things we'd like to forget. There are some things that we should that never should have happened in our lives. I know that's true in mine. And I'm pretty sure it's true in most of us. If God, though, is willing to forgive and to forget the things that we've done wrong, the sins of the past, then why on earth can't we let it go? Why do we hang on to it and let the devil bring it up to us and shake it in our face? God said, I have redeemed thee. It's over. It's done. Sins of the past are paid for. We will never have joy today if we're not willing to forgive ourselves of past mistakes. I see some Christians I, they, they seem to be the most miserable people on the face of the earth because of the things that have happened in their past. They just can't let it go. And uh, that's a mistake. We need to let it go. Turn it over to the Lord. For the child of God, there are some things in the past that we can rejoice about. Would you agree? There are some things in my past that I am thankful for. Boy, I'm thankful for the day that I got under conviction and trusted Christ as my Savior. Amen. I'm thankful for that. If you're saved, your past has some wonderful aspects that are worth reflections. Do you realize who is speaking in this text? It was God Almighty. God, Jehovah God, the, the, the Lord Jehovah. He was reminding Israel as, as well as reminding us just who he is. He's the God of creation. First uh, John 1, 3 says, All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. All that we see, all that we know is of God, including ourselves. Do you ever just stop and think about the awesomeness of God? Try to, try to get a, a, a vision, a mental picture of what God is really like. It'll blow your mind. 
I can't. I never can get to where I want to go. I try to think about God, the great Creator, the the person who put the 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 satellites and the sun and the moon and all these things in their place and maintains and sustains. And He created man, and man became a living soul. And I mean, when I think about God, I I can't even I can't even get there. I can't. God is awesome. He's unbelievable, unbelievably great. And we are the handiwork of that master potter. You and I are his handiwork. He created us. God made us. No, we did not evolve from monkeys or, or frogs or one-celled amoebas. God created man. Then... As I look at my past, I'm reminded that I'm a creation of God. So many things come into, come into play and come into focus that let me know that God created me and he created me for a purpose, for a reason. None of us are here by chance. God gave each of us a life and he has a plan for our lives. That in, in itself is is a significant part of, of our past. In Jeremiah, the first chapter in verse 5, the Lord said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God put all the pieces together to make you who you are. We are his creation. We're no accident. And he said, furthermore, I have redeemed thee. I have redeemed thee. I'm reminded of my redemption. Oh, what a joyful experience when the Holy Spirit began to deal with me. I couldn't get away from the convicting power of the Holy Spirit in one night. After attending a gospel meeting, I pulled my car off the side of the road. I bowed my head across the steering wheel, and I said, Oh, God, I don't know much about you. I don't know much about the Bible, but I want to be saved. Come into my heart and save me. Oh, what joy. What joy. That joy has remained there for 61 years. Joy. Not always happiness. There's been a lot of unhappy times, but the joy and the contentment and the peace of God was put in my heart that day to stay, and I'm thankful for it. I was born in sin, separated from God, but he loved me enough to provide a way of salvation. The Bible says, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before we were ever born, before we were created, God knew that one day we would need a Savior. God knew that. God foreknows everything. God foreknows. He sent His Son to be that Savior, to come and minister on earth for 33 years and then go to an old rugged cross, be put to death there, buried, rose again, and I'm thankful that there was a time when he brought to my attention the fact that I needed to trust him. I did. And so many of you have as well. There may be some that have not. Of all my past, the day that I accepted Jesus was the best day of my life. Amen. There have been some good days. I, I'm, I won't deny that. I've had some good days in my life. But none can compare to the day that I received Jesus as my Savior. Amen. It was the difference maker in my eternal destination. How can I reflect on my past and not have joy? How can you reflect on your past and not have joy if, if Jesus has been a part of it? Been redeemed by the blood of Christ. He took my sin, gave me righteousness. 
He no longer sees my past sin, but he sees the blood of Christ. I'm eternally forgiven, and one day I'm going to heaven. You say, well, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty brazen to say that you know you're going to heaven. Based on the authority of God's eternal word, who cannot lie, I am just as good as in heaven today as if I was already there. Now, some of you don't believe that. Some of you won't accept that. But you see, God's grace makes that possible. Amen. God's grace. Well, by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. The gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I'm thankful for a, for a, a willing Savior and a convicting Holy Spirit that brought salvation to my heart and into my life. Then... The writer says, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Thou art mine. Verse 1. Also, we're reminded of the change that has taken place in our lives. We're not what we used to be. And I thought of this song. A new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. You know that. I thought about that song when I was preparing this message. That day... June the 13th, 1962, a new name was written down in glory, and it's mine. It's mine. When was yours written down? Has there ever been a time when your name was written down in glory? See, when we come to Christ, we are separated unto him. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Isn't that great? Then verse 2 said, God said, when thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God had reminded Israel of their past, but, he also, but he, he's also reminding them of their standing now. Now. Let's not get so hung up on the past that we forget our present possessions. We think about, and, and I, I guess I'm guilty of this too, but I see some of you. You live in a state of depression. You live in a state of worry. You know, somebody said, I can't remember who said this, but they said, if you let yesterday go and quit worrying about tomorrow, today usually is pretty good. The word they used was tolerable. I avoided that because I say that all the time. Life is pretty tolerable if we could forget the past and quit worrying about the future. So, we need, to, we need to learn to do that. Uh, but I see so many Christians who just worry, 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 worry about everything. Worry about their health. They're afraid to get sick, afraid they're going to die. We're all going to die. It's just a matter of when and where. If I knew where I was going to die, I wouldn't go there. But, but. I don't know, so it's going to happen one day. And uh, I'll there'll be an obituary in the paper that said I'm dead. Don't you believe that? I'm not dead. I'm more alive than I've ever been. Amen. When I'm dead, I'm alive, okay? <laughs> but anyway, verse 2. Did I read that? When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire... When thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle up on thee. I'm glad that God did not save me 
and leave me to make my own way. Life can be hard, and it is hard in many cases, but we can have real joy here and now. Today, we can have joy. God is making provision for us right now. When thou passest through the waters, he said, I'll be with thee. It's a reminder of the miracle at the Red Sea. God made a way when there was no way. God's assurance to Israel that he would be with them as well. He promised, God has promised to never leave us, never forsake us. I'm so glad for the presence of God in my daily life. Without the presence of God, life would not be worth living. He reassures us at every turn. God's power and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. This is a reminder of when Israel crossed Jordan into the promised land. The Bible tells us that the river was out of its banks. It stood between them and a victorious life. The Lord's power held back the river so they could safely cross. You know that story. The Egyptians were pursuing the Israelites and they came up to the, to the Jordan River and it was up and overflowing and God just stopped the flow of the river and he held it back while they were able to cross. Our lives will have many occasions of difficulty and distress. Times when it seems like life's more than we can bear. Don't raise your hand, but have you ever been there? Sure you have. Most of us have. If we're a little advanced in years, we've experienced a lot. Sometimes we seem to be drowning in a river of trouble. But God said, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. I promise. There will be some Jordans that we can't cross alone. We don't have to. Songwriter said, when I come to the river at ending of day, and the last winds of sorrow have blown. There will be somebody waiting to show me the way. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Isn't that wonderful? That's one of my favorite songs. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Not only is he talking about death. He's talking about life. He's talking about as we go through this life and we encounter the difficulties and the distresses and the troubles that we do. And we're faced with crossing Jordan. We don't have to cross Jordan alone. There will be somebody waiting to show me the way. And I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Why? Why? Listen to me. Why do believers cry, moan, and complain? got nothing to complain about oh we my hip hurts my legs hurts my elbow hurts and I try to keep my mouth shut I got so many good things going on they offset the bad and when I think about my future hey I don't have long left here and I know that I realize that It's time for me to leave. You see, God said that our normal lifespan is three score and ten. That's 70 years. I've already beat that by 17 years. And I'm just waiting for the train to come. I'm going home one day soon. Packed, ready. Waiting for transportation. But I say that to say this. How on earth can a believer... Moan, groan, and complain about life when he's got heaven in view. I mean, this is just a short span. Paul calls it, Paul said that this is just a, a moment. Life is but a moment. Eternity is forever. 
And though we complain and gripe, we really don't have any right to. That's the way we are, though. God has never failed you and me. We need to learn to rejoice in his mighty power. What I'm trying to convince you of this morning, Christians can have real joy in spite of tribulation and trials. We can have a deep settled peace down in our hearts in knowing that our sins are forgiven. That one day and very soon, we're going to be face to face with Christ our Savior. Face to face, what will it be when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me? When thou walkest through the fire, he said, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. I am so glad for the reassurance of his protection. Many times we try to cross Jordan alone. And we get in deep trouble. God in his mercy came and allowed us to keep our head above water. We would surely have perished had it not been for his intervention. We can't walk through the fire without God. Not just the river, but the fire as well. We face an enemy who is determined to snuff out our lives, destroy our testimonies, the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were in the fiery furnace. Didn't even get to smell of smoke on them. Why? Because of the fourth man in the fire. Jesus Christ was in there with them. Now, God will take care of you. Now, let me say this. Don't do foolish things and tempt God. Don't jump off a four-story building and tempt God to catch you. It doesn't work that way. See, God has a law of gravity. We're going to fall. Don't drive 120 miles an hour on West Virginia roads and expect God to take good care of you. That's using very poor judgment. God gives us brains to reason things out. We know we shouldn't do those things. So, but we're going to be here until God decides that our work is done. When God's through with me on this earth, he'll take me home. When God's through with you, he'll take you home. And we don't know when that is. He has put a hedge about us that Satan can't break through. God was faithful in Moses' day. He remains able. He remains faithful today. Rest assured in his word today. Rest assured. We, we'll sit in church and we'll agree with what the preacher said. We'll nod our head. Amen. Yeah, everything's fine. Then we go out and just go right back to what we were doing before. Just worrying and groaning and griping, complaining. No, I, I, I hope... That, I hope this message will change your life. Snap you out of the doldrums and out of the depression. And know that God loves you. God cares for you. Sent his son to die for you. And one day he's coming to take you home. Then let's talk just a minute about the future. Some reminders for the future. In verse 4 he said, Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And I've loved thee, therefore will I give men for, give uh, give men for thee and for and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy need, my seed from the east, gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up unto the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I formed him, yea, I have made him. Keep in mind the context of this passage. Israel faced captivity, but God had promised that it was not going to last forever. He was reminding them of their future with him. We have hope for a glorious future. 
1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, if, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of, of all men most miserable. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all, all men most miserable. The life, this life of trouble and heartache and pain is not all there is for the child of God. There's more. There's more. Notice our position. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Precious. What does the word precious mean? It means to highly esteem. It means to be prized. It means to be highly valuable. That's what precious means. They were precious to the Lord. He loved them. A great price was paid for the redemption. The church, the church, the church of God is valuable to him. He loves his church. And the church is secure in Jesus Christ. We're secure. We are the church, by the way. We're secure in him. John 10, 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which, is, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man's able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Can you believe that and accept that? That you're saved, you're in the Master's hand, and nobody can pluck you out of his hand. What does that mean? That means if you are in Christ, you're just the same. You're just the same as if you were an already, already in heaven. You're as good as there. Now I know there's a lot of people who don't don't buy that. They don't. But the Word of God tells us that. You can. You can listen to Grandma or Grandpa or Uncle John or Mom or Dad. They may not agree with this, but let's, let's let God talk. Let God talk. God says that we are secure in Him. Life may be filled with disappointments. Others may not see much value in your life. But God has a place reserved in heaven for you. He said, "In my Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. For we're not so old, I told you. And I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm coming again. And I'm going to catch you up and take you home to be there. And if you believe that, notify your face. I like to see some joy in faces once in a while when we talk about the, the, the wonderful things that face the believer just ahead with all the trouble that's going on around us, with all the, with the, the wildfires in Hawaii and the, the riots in the cities and all the gasoline prices, all the things that are going haywire. I'm still smiling. Got a better home waiting. Somewhere beyond this world. We're only one breath away from claiming the position that you already possess. You possess a home in heaven. It's yours. Did you know you're one heartbeat away from claiming it? Life is so fragile. It's so fragile. A heartbeat, a breath, just uh, somebody coming around the curve on the wrong side. That's how far we are away from eternity. Rejoice in your position. Then in verses 4 through 7, God promised to one day gather the nation of Israel again. You know, they were scattered. For years, Israel was scattered. God promised to bring them together again. 
And in 1948, he did. Israel became a nation. There will be a gathering of the church as we are presented as the bride of Christ one day. We'll march into that great city of God presented at the marriage supper of the Lamb. What a day that's going to be to stand in that great number received and accepted of God. So lift up your head, weary Christian. Our wedding day is getting close. Our wedding day is getting very close. We'll all be there. That is all of God's saints. If you aren't a child of God, you will not be there. Are you one of his? That's the important question as we, as we bring it to a close. My question to you is this. Has there ever been a time in your life when you saw yourself as a sinner, lost and headed for a Christless eternity, but the Holy Spirit came and told you that there's a way, there is a way to enter into the presence of God. That's through Jesus Christ. Everyone that is called by my name, he said, for I've created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. God says that man was created for his glory. He loves you. God loves you. How can you not be excited about the next chapter in your life? See, we, we don't like to give up our loved ones. Certainly we don't. I don't like to give up my loved ones. I grieve when it happens. But, you know, for the Christian... That's not a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. When we leave this old diseased body, and go to heaven where we get a new body and we're going to live forever in the presence of Almighty God. Sometimes I think that we're doing a person a disservice when we pray, oh God, heal their body, don't let them die. And I do, I pray that way, if it be your will, Lord. Maybe it's a disservice. I want to go to heaven. I do. I'm looking forward to it. And I know that I won't have to cross Jordan alone. My wife can't go with me. My children can't go with me, but he's going to be there. He promised our lives don't have to be lived in constant sorrow and fear. We can have real joy for the journey because of what God has done, what he's doing, what he's promised to do. Rejoice today in your salvation. But now, the other side of that is this. If you're lost, your past, your present, your future is pretty dark. But all that can change today. Jesus has already purchased and paid for your redemption. All you need to do is come and receive it. We're going to stand in a moment. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. And uh, if you're here today and you have doubts about your relationship to God, if you'll step out and come, somebody will take the Bible, show you from God's word how you can know beyond any doubt that you're saved. Let's pray together.